Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. Today we're looking at probably one of my favourite genres, which I guess you could describe as adventure strategy. I don't think I can get away with calling pirates a genre, but yeah, pretty much just pirates. And King of Seas looks to combine many of the elements that made one of my all-time favourites, Sid Meier's Pirates, the classic that it is. Published by Team 17, I was excited to dive into the full release, but will it make a splash on the Switch? Or is this simply a flood? of poor performances. Well, let's find out. The narrative centers around the two children of the King of Seas himself, and I chose to play as Luki, who finds himself framed for something he didn't do, and then outcast to join the pirates. Through undertaking the story missions, you'll learn the extent to which the corruption has spread within his father's empire. It's a classic coming of age slash revenge tale, and it works well enough, but I would have liked the story to be delivered through narrated cutscenes rather than simply text on screen. As far as gameplay and controls go, I've got a lot to say here, both positive and negative. And you begin your jaunty adventure aboard a very small sloop, which you soon become captain of. You'll control it using the left stick, with the R bumper buttons being used to change the quantity of sails that are open, and you'll gain and equip a number of ability-giving items that will be bound to X, A and B. These come in different colour-coded rarities, with a price to reflect that. But strangely, sometimes they would be very expensive, but the statistics would be much worse than that of a lower colour. There's a mission structure here that's split into your main missions, which will progress the story, and side missions that can be found in the tavern. And on a side note, I didn't really like how these were placed. It was quite tricky early on to actually see where you get your side quests from. It is briefly mentioned, but it's quite easy to overlook this. Then there's the side quests themselves. There's a reward which is shown on screen and a small cutscene, but after about four or five hours of play, you'll have seen almost all of the side quests in the game. And they're also a little uninspired. Things like delivering items from one port to the next or defeating a certain number of a certain type of ship. These do serve the purpose of increasing your gold, gaining you some new rare items and incentivizing exploration, but they become tedious rather quickly. The world is split into three different factions, the pirates, the merchants, and then the navy. And it's inevitable that you will find yourself in naval combat with some of these at various points. When you're away from ports, you can attack freely without any consequences. But behind the scenes, there will be a bounty level being accrued on your head. So eventually you'll have pirate hunters come after you and you might find yourself in the Hall of Fame. Combat is probably my favourite aspect of the game. While I initially thought my measly little sloop was a weak vessel, used correctly, it can actually be incredibly powerful. It had fast manoeuvrability, was able to turn on a dime, and then when decked out with the various legendary items I'd gathered, it really did pack a punch. As you navigate the map, you'll come across different islands which may have loot scattered on their shores, which you can snatch up. The same goes for sunken ships, and there are a number of treasure maps that you can use to navigate and locate some particularly rare items. By clicking in the right stick, you can bring up your map, but to unlock each individual area, you'll need to purchase one from a cartographer but I had a number of problems with the navigation system in the game. Switching to that map is fine, but unfortunately you have to zoom in very close to individual areas to actually see which ports are available. It ends up feeling really quite clunky, and while I can see they've tried to make it a bit more authentic in that regard, making you feel like you're navigating, in actual fact, it's not that fun and it would have been better to have an on-screen map, or at least give the player the option to have an on-screen map. Thankfully though, you are given quite a clear waypoint whenever you have a mission, but it would have made much more sense to tie this to your compass shown at the top right of the screen so that you didn't have to quickly flick back and forward all the time. And that takes me on to another critique of the controls. The developers have opted to fix the perspective so you can't rotate the camera. And I can think of at least five or six times where scenery blocked my vision and allowing me to rotate would have fixed this. Now perhaps they did this because it makes navigation easier, but they could have allowed the compass at the top right of the screen to rotate to reflect your movement of the camera, and then it mitigates that and makes it a non-issue. King of Seas allows the player to become a trader. Each port will show you how many of each item are available, 
This is demarcated with an arrow either pointing up or down and given a red or green colour. And you're also told which port has a lot of a particular item or a little of one so you know which items to bring where. But strangely, although this seems like a very clear and obvious system, in practice it's rare that the player feels like they know which ports have what and which ports need what items. And I think having some form of management tab that showed each port you'd visited and the items they'd wanted at the time would have made a bit more sense. I ended up screenshotting each port I went to, which don't get me wrong, it's very old school, but it wasn't very fun. The map itself uses procedural generation. It's a modular procedural system, so the order and placement of certain key areas will be different each time you play, as in starting a new game, but the actual layout of individual islands remains consistent. You'll find volcanoes, hidden treasure, there'll be the occasional storm on the high seas that can be quite damaging to your ship, and they've opted for a perilous border rather than a static one, so you're not going to hit an invisible wall. You'll hit an area where they say, well this is too dangerous, you should turn around, and if you don't listen to them, well, we know what happened in Subnautica. Now I mentioned that you can unlock different vessels, but to my irritation I found that you can't actually do this until you've hit a certain point in the story. I'm always one of these players that just goes off. I ignore the story completely and do as much side content as I can. So I'd saved up enough money to purchase the best ship in the game, but couldn't do so until I'd done an arbitrary mission. That was slightly irritating. Thankfully it didn't take too long and soon I'd bought every vessel I needed. And that's where another slight irritation crept in. The other ships in the game level with you. This is obviously to stop players becoming completely overpowered and there's a little flexibility in it so you may find some a couple of levels above and a couple below. But personally I prefer it when you can become overpowered. I spent those five hours grinding so that I could get the gold so that I could be absolutely unstoppable. And in all fairness, you can overcome through skill, and that's why I think the combat is my favorite part of the game, but owning the most expensive ship is not the way to do it. In actual fact, I'd say, if you can, go for the brig. It has the best upgrades, it's the fastest ship in the game, and you'll essentially be unstoppable once you've got it. King of Sea certainly falls into that addictive game category, whereby they're not necessarily perfect, but its core loop can be quite compelling. Defeating ships, taking all of their gear, and gradually upgrading your ship and becoming more feared across the high seas has always appealed to me. But I think the procedural generation lets this down. It doesn't feel handcrafted, and much of the world map is quite lifeless. They need to tweak the economy systems, but through the main story, New mechanics are introduced quite late in the game which make it more compelling. And there's a dramatic shift whereby you'll suddenly have to take over several ports, which is no mean feat in King of Seas. But many tricks were missed, and chief among them for me is not allowing the player any way of taking over another ship which I understand is designed to stop you from becoming too powerful too fast, but there are other ways of doing that. Gameplay overall then is fun but flawed. I love the modular nature of the ships and how many different items can be equipped to them to change the way they fight in combat, but the world itself wasn't overly compelling to explore and some of the control choices didn't make much sense and with a little tweak in the game could easily go from being okay and good to being something great. As it stands now I give gameplay 14 out of 20 and those controls score 13 out of 20. Let's look at visuals and performance as well as audio. The game is running for the most part at 35 frames per second and it has very good frame pacing until it doesn't. Probably once a minute the frame rate will drop right down as if the game is loading in assets. Perhaps it has something to do with the way the world's generated, but it happens constantly throughout your playtime. I quite like some of the visual aspects of the game, which reminds me of Quentin Blake's famous artwork within Roald Dahl's novels and it works well in contrast with the 3D low polygon visuals. On the Switch, the resolution seems a touch below native, and they've opted for a post-processed anti-aliasing technique to remove the jaggy lines around objects, which gives the world a real blur when it's blown up over a large screen. It's not the worst I've ever seen, but it's definitely noticeable. And in my opinion, there's nothing going on within this game that should cause any performance issues and it needs a patch. This really should be running at 30 to 60 frames per second at all times. 
While the different items you collect in the world will change the appearance of your ship, I would have liked to have been able to name them and manually customise different colour schemes. The real letdown for me though is the water itself when you contrast it with something like Subnautica. where the sea looks beautiful. Not only is it quite flat in King of Seas, but you can actually see the tessellation and the repeating pattern, which is a big miss when you consider that's what you'll be staring at for the entire game. Now I mentioned the camera not being able to rotate, and you can actually adjust the zoom level between three presets, but they become redundant because you can't rotate to see what's in front of you. Also having this as a fluid camera where you can set the height to whatever you want it to be, once again would have been a better option. In handheld, text size is too small and there's no option to change it, which is a shame. I love the audio that they've gone for. It's so typical of the genre, but it goes above and beyond by not being too overt and only providing you a tune when it's really necessary. Enter combat and the rhythm and tempo will crank up and the sound effects are excellent throughout the experience. I would have loved if they included voice actors. Overall, I give visuals and performance 13 out of 20 and the audio 16 out of 20. King of Seas retails at £19.99 or your regional equivalent. There is a demo of this one, so if you kind of got intrigued by what I said, then do consider checking it out. But at 20 quid, I think it's about right maybe 15 would have been more like it, but it is still an enjoyable experience despite its flaws. I give value 14 out of 20. King of Seas has charm, and it does some things really well, but it also stumbles in some areas that it really shouldn't. That being said, it's a title I have found very compelling, despite the stumbles it makes. It scores an overall switch up score, of 70%. Let me know in the comments if you'll be picking this one up if you already have done so and what you think of my critiques. As always a big thanks to our patrons who support us each and every month. Go and check out our reviews of Shin Megami which came out today as well as the new Wonder Boy title and I'll pop links to those in the top pin comment. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys, see ya!